Yes. Start the recording. Okay. It is very relevant when you start to do design. So when we considered this KC stuff, I said, all right, if I have a K, let's say my right is A plus B that goes to C. So all the problems we've dealt with so far in the online tests and in the uh, TUTs was actually very easy to analyze because we only, I gave you the rate of A and it was first order in A and it was A that goes to B or it was to A that goes to B, or it was second order in A. So none of these, okay, but I've got two reactants that must compete. And in the slides, I say, all right, compare uh, the effect, the diffusivity of each of the components in the mixture. And the one that's the bully, that is the one for which, the one that's got the lowest diffusivity, that is the one for which I need to calculate Kc and for which the bulk phase concentration and the surface concentration will not be the same. So, in other words, then in my right equation, let's say I consider this one and that, what, that has got the much lower diffusivity. In my right equation on the Ki dash side, so Kcim, Ki dash side, I will have CA surface times CB bulk, right? And then the question, some questions arise in that, but let's say you had 2B there. So that means that we must actually diffuse twice as much because I'm going to require more than A to be present at the surface. Shouldn't I, when I consider this, um, uh, what do you call it, heuristic, to test which of my components I must consider when I calculate diffusion and limina, uh, limitations? Shouldn't I consider the fact that then the diffusivity of B must actually be twice the diffusivity of A and I must employ my proper CIP criteria? And once again, our, our problems hide the, the inherent, maybe more complex nature of this whole scenario. Um, so, of course, what you have to take into consideration also is the ratio in which they are fed. Are they fed stoichiometrically? Or do I have 50 moles per cubic meter of A, but I only have one mole per cubic meter of B. So I've got much less of B in the bulk that can drive that diffusion process. So it certainly, yes, will become more complex. You are not going to get problems like this in the test. No? So don't worry, we will get similar like in our A goes to B or 2A goes to B, I promise you. But when you do design, it is useful to know um, the criteria that you must use to decide which of them must I, for which of these components should I consider diffusion and which of them um, will not have a concern because it's got the ability to catch up. And some, I don't know why, for which reason, but your textbook discuss this criteria, the Mears criteria. Mears criteria, only in chapter 12. So I will uh, revisit this again if people miss this um, lecture. The Mears criteria, and it's given as a very hidden equation in as equation 1262. But that is similar to our Weisbrother test that we apply for higher order reactions. So the Weisbrother test you can apply on a component by component basis because you use the rate of disappearance of each of the components but let's say we can use B for change just to be different. The catalyst density, the concentration of O, oh, so Daisy, I'm so used to writing A, the concentration of B, and there the order of the reaction comes in, and the particle diameter, and the effective diffusivity of B in the catalyst pores. So you can actually, on a component by component basis, calculate the Weiss Prater criteria to see, yes, I have to, because this parameter, this concentration is limiting, it will dominate the eta effect. Okay, So that is what we will apply in um, porous catalyst scenarios. The Mears sorry, criteria is a similar test that says, and I'm going to write that equation, but you can go and um, read it on your own, that says I've got a mass based rate that let in a, a packed reactor, I must get that to a volumetric rate. 
I multiply it by the diameter of my catalyst particle and I include the order of the reaction. So it's just some test of, and this can now of course be the rate of B, rate of disappearance of B. Let's have it. And this is the pack bed density. It's not the density of B. So that's why that may be confusing. So this is my bed density if you fall asleep, if I've fallen asleep. And then I divide it by KC and the concentration of B then in the bulk or whatever component it is. Let's just make that an I. So let's have it more general. So this is for whatever component I am busy doing this test. Is it component A, B or C, what, whichever of my reactants and what is that concentration in the bulk? So once again, what is this driving force for diffusion? And of course, this KC value is different for each of the components because KC includes the effect, the diffusivity, sorry, not effective here, but it includes the diffusivity of each of that components as it is in the mixture. So this is a test. So we calculate this parameter. And what the Mies criteria says, if this is less than 0 0.15, CI bulk can be used as CI surface. If it's larger, you should start worrying about the rate of diffusion compared to the rate of reaction of that component. So this actually simplifies this whole thing of trying to model it using my CRP, equimolar, counter diffusion, whatever kind of calculations, is in saying how fast it's the potential for reaction. It's once again like the Weisbrother criteria. It is a potential reaction rate. And when you have measured data, you will use the measured rate there. If you have right models, you will have used the modeled rate there. Divided by how fast can the stuff diffuse, the rate constant for diffusion, and what is that driving force for diffusion? How dilute is that specific reactor? in my reacting mixture. So I can actually perform a component by component test in order to discover which of the components, and then I don't have to think about that because it's built in to my MIES criteria. And when I finally model my reaction, I can decide which of the components is there if on this in this mass transfer equation, which one is the one that I must use on this in the CI bulk minus C surface. Um, mass transfer. I will only consider one of the components, and that's the one for which the Mies criteria will give me the highest value. Okay, so um, that is something completely new. It's not for the test um, for first order systems. Yes, of course. You, the the Weisbrother criteria applies to, so it is discussed in the context of um, higher order reactions, but it can be generalized to um, lower order reactions as well, oh, lower order, <laughs> to first order reactions as well. Just once again, that um, eta value will fall away. So if you don't know what your, it, it's, it's specifically useful for people doing experiments who want don't want to mold catalyst particles, but want to test whether they should consider the fact that to caution the users of the catalyst particles that this is not extrapolatable outside the temperature ranges that we are considering because the Weisbrother criteria is um, parameter is too high, even for first order systems. And this Mies criteria that I've just discussed, the Mies criteria, you can also use for any reaction order. The first order systems we are busy considering, the uh, higher order systems, and that is very useful when you 